Riding a three-game winning streak, the ACU football team welcomes an old friend to Shotwell Stadium. I'm Shani Morosky. And I'm Grant Boone. We'll look back at yet another blowout victory and ahead to the Wildcats' first meeting with Lamar in more than 40 years. It's the Ken Collum Show right now. Welcome to week six of the Ken Collum Show, presented by Buffalo Wild Wings from the JMC Network Studios on the campus of Abilene Christian University. I'm Grant Boone, joined by ACU junior Sharon Nemorowski and the head coach of the ACU football Wildcats, Ken Collins. 59-14, the Wildcats rolled over Houston Baptist, beating the Huskies at Husky Stadium down in Houston last Saturday night. Coach, what have these last three weeks for your team done for the team's confidence and their spirits? Well, we're starting to get into a groove. We're playing better and better. Uh, and what you see as a coach in these last three games is we're starting to get a little more used to doing details for the, in, for the entire four quarters. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the last, the last two opponents hadn't been to the same caliber as the first three. Mm -hmm. uh, so our margin of victory has been a little bit better. We've scored more points. But, uh, you know, the bottom line is you want your guys to play well for four quarters. And... I can see our guys improving, and we're getting to play more people. So all that, all that equals better football on Saturdays, but uh, but it also equals better practices throughout the week. And if you practice well, there's a good chance you're going to play well. You told us a few weeks ago these close games were getting bad for your health. How does 59 to 14 feel? Well, 59 to 14 is really good. Bottom line, it's a win. Uh, what did give me a couple of more gray hairs probably <laughs> is all the penalties. We had we had four blocks in the back, which are I mean some of that. Some of that uh, is heavy passion. You know, we talk about playing with a lot of passion. Yeah. Sometimes, you, you, sometimes you're sometimes you going to do some things that are not all that great, but hitting somebody in the back is probably not a smart thing to do. And uh, so we, we dealt with that on Tuesday after practice. So, you know what, you got to call them on it. But uh, our guys are playing hard, so I'm very pleased with that. Well, we will talk about tonight's game against Lamar coming up here in just a little bit. But when we come back on the Ken Collins Show, we will look back at that 59-14 route of the Houston Baptist Huskies last Saturday night. Glad you're with us for the Ken Collins Show. Welcome back to the Ken Collins Show, presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. It rained cats and dogs last Saturday night in Houston, where ACU made the HBU Huskies heal. With a look at the highlights, here's Daniel Zepeda. The Wildcats traveled to South Texas to take on the Houston Baptist Huskies on Saturday night. The Wildcats look to win their third game in a row in their second game against conference opponents. On HBU's second play of the game, quarterback Jonathan Fleming connected to find the tight end Kenneth Bibbins for a 46-yard touchdown. The touchdown gave HBU an early 7-0 lead. The Wildcats would put together a drive that involved a heavy rush attack early on as quarterback Parker McKenzie takes off for a 17-yard run. The running back, Herschel Sims, would then rush for a 13-yard pickup. The drive ended with a 33-yard made field goal, putting ACU on the board 7-3. On their following drive, McKenzie would find receiver Cedric Gilbert for one of his two receiving touchdowns on the game. This 9-yard touchdown extends Gilbert's streak to five consecutive games with a score. HBU would come back on this 77-yard pass to make the score 31-14 ACU in the second quarter. This play, McKenzie would find Jonathan Parker for a 10-yard pickup. McKenzie would tally 385 yards and four touchdowns with zero interceptions in his second straight zero turnover game but the game would belong to Herschel Sims as he rushed for 128 yards, averaging 8.5 yards per carry and reached the end zone three times for the Wildcats. After coming off a slow start to the season along with an injury, it looks as if Sims is back to his old form. Wide receiver Cade Stone led all Wildcat receivers with seven receptions for a season-high 121 yards and a touchdown. 
He has 259 yards and is second on the team with four touchdowns. The offense would run away with the game as the team put up 659 yards of total offense compared to HBU's 300. The Wildcats would score eight touchdowns and were only forced to a field goal one time. All right, Daniel, thank you. 59 to 14, the final score. Coach, uh, not exactly um, an auspicious beginning for your team. You go three and out on offense, and then boom, two plays later, Jonathan Fleming hits their humongous tight end, Kenneth Bibbins, and they're on the board at 7 0. A, a wake up call. Well, yeah, it was. And in our first third down, we had a really good play called, and it almost went for 40 or 50 yards for us. But they had, they had a, the perfect defense called, and, and uh, we we're trying to throw a little slant to Cade Stone. And, uh, they made a good play, and they turned that into in, into seven points. So, yeah, you know, it's good for them. Yeah, seven nothing. Uh, your team then got going. Second drive for your offense. You began to feed Herschel Sims. His first game to play without DeAndre Brown available. So you knew he was the guy, and boy, was he ever on Saturday night. He got five carries on that second drive, 33 yards. You settled for a field goal, but you began to get some offensive rhythm. You had a 10-7 lead, first play of the second quarter. I think if you can have a huge turning point in a 59-14 game, if that's possible, I think the turning point was third and 11 for your team near midfield. It's only 10 to 7. You know, they get a stop and get the ball, and, you know, sure. they get a little confidence. Instead, Parker buys himself a little bit of time, gets out of the pocket, hits Herschel on a check down, and Herschel takes it 34 yards for a first down, and fittingly, he finishes that drive off with his first ACU touchdown. That's right. You know, you, as, as we look back in doing these shows, a couple of the key plays that we talk about are simply just dump offs that Parker makes. His eyes are down the field, something doesn't work out. He's got, a, he's got enough poise to come down and hit a dump route. And, uh, and it's been, you know, when you throw it to Herschel and DeAndre there, mm -hmm. when all their linebackers and corners and safeties are backed off, we're going to make a lot of yards. So that's, it's, it's a really good play by Parker. And I, I agree, that's, that's, a, that's a critical time in the game to where you just need somebody to make a routine play. And that's what, uh, that's what Parker did. And, you know, when you're dumping it off to Herschel, he's going to make yards. Well, he made a bunch of yards the next time you got it. It was 17-7 after he scored that touchdown to finish off that previous drive. First play of the next drive. It's our play of the game, and let's take a look. 62 yards here for Herschel Sims, showing the burst that made him one of the most coveted recruits in all of the nation coming out of Abilene High. Sure, this is a little outside run to the right, and, uh, you know, we blocked it pretty clean, and, and then when you get Herschel out on the edge, he's, he's going to make yards, and, and I thought he was going to score. Well, he would score later in that drive. In fact, all 75 yards of that drive, just give it to Herschel, right? Yep. yep, that's right. He was strong that entire quarter. In fact, he would wind up with three touchdowns in that, third, uh, in that second quarter. The third of those, which I thought was really important, again, another little mini you know, burst of momentum for your team. They hit a big play over the top on, on what looked like a busted play. But they found a really good receiver, Darian Lazard, for a 77-yard touchdown. Again, they're going to get the ball to start the second half. It's now 31-14 late in the second quarter. And instead, you guys come out with the very first play. You go over the top, and you hit Jonathan Epps, who's quickly establishing himself as a big play player on both sides of the ball well, and special teams. That's right. He's a three-phase guy. I mean, the guy can do it all. Jonathan Epps. He is getting more used to who we are, what we're doing, kind of finding his groove, and we're, we're figuring out his boundaries, and the guy can run routes, catch the ball, can catch punts, and he, and he can cover a little bit, too. He's, he's, a, he's a pretty good corner. I can't help but wonder if his play on the defensive side of the ball makes him an even better wide receiver. Probably does. I mean, he is, but, but he is, you don't see very many guys that can run forward, but then run backward equally well, and, and he can, and that's very unique. Think of a guy, Carl Pickens, who played for Tennessee back in the, in the 90s who went on to play for the Bengals, a, a good two-way player like that. You don't see it very often, no, you don't. But, but Epps uh, is getting it done. So then you guys wind up taking that 38-14 lead. Then on the very first play, the kickoff of the second half, you force a fumble. Sam Denmark falls on the fumble, uh, and you guys wind up uh, next play hitting Cade Stone, who, by the way, Congratulations. His first 100-yard receiving day as a Wildcat. He's been terrific this year. Yeah, he has. And in that Houston Baptist game, uh, we, we knew there were some matchup issues there that we could take advantage of, and, and it ended up playing out like we wanted. 
you get a couple of takeaways. You didn't give the ball away for a second consecutive game. Your team has lost one game since you've been at ACU as either offensive coordinator or head coach. You've lost one game when you didn't turn the ball over. Is is it that? It's not that simple, is it? Well, it, it, if you give the ball away, you're asking to get beat. Period. And and we are really really good at protecting the ball. One of the best one of the best teams in the country. We have been for a long yeah. time at that. And it's just a culture around here. And, uh, you know, that's always going to give you a chance to win. And then, and then, you know, if you do well in the other phases, you'll, you'll have a better chance to win. But we're going to protect the ball. And, and we hope to tonight. Uh, nothing's going to change. Uh, we're going to go out and be as aggressive as we can on offense, but, but also protect the ball at the same time. So defensively, you, you allow a couple of big plays, that 46-yard that touchdown on their second play of the game, and then that uh, somewhat busted play that went for 77. But Coach, really, when you start thinking about midway through the second half, midway through really the third quarter of the Troy game to Incarnate Word, now Houston Baptist, and granted, Incarnate Word and Houston Baptist at this point of their football programs aren't where they want to be offensively. I don't care. Those are some teams that racked up some big yards and points against some other teams. That's right. Our, uh, in the second half, our defense is solid, and it has. I don't care who we're playing against. Those guys are getting lined up right. And they're, and they're playing really, really well, really hard in the second half. And, uh, you know, thir our third quarter's been really good to us. And, uh, you know, we hope to do the same uh, tonight. Sam Denmark had another takeaway. Quentin Bryant, Quentin Baker each with uh, some turnovers forced and recovered yep. as well. That's right. You're, you're getting, getting a lot. More and more people involved, and that's good. You are. You're getting 16, 17, 18 guys now playing in frequent snaps yeah. each and that, game. And that's what you need. In the South and what we're about to go through, you need depth because it, 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 you guys are going to get dinged up and, and you're going to need more depth on special teams. And those guys are rising up. And they're just young guys who, who are getting the opportunity to play and, and they're making, uh, making good on it. All right. Congratulations, Coach. 2-0 and o now in the Southland Conference, 3-2 and two overall. When we come back on the Ken Collins Show presented by Buffalo Wild Wings, Shara tries to do something that ACU opponents really haven't done very well lately, and that's catch up with ACU running back Herschel Sims. But as we go to break, take a look at last week's scores from around the Southland Conference, brought to you by University Park Apartments. These last two games have reminded us of the amazing ability that took Sims from his hometown of Abilene to the highest level of college football. A long and at times difficult journey has brought him back to the place where it all began. After almost a year off, you're five games in, how does it feel being back in the swing of things? It feels good. Um, a year and a half is a very long time, you know, but I've been patient, you know, so I'm just happy to be back out there playing with the guys. Right. Now going off that, you struggled with some injuries earlier this year, um, but last Saturday you quickly made up for that. I caught up with you after the game and you were saying that you're feeling good. Just expand on that. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good right now. You know, I'm feeling as best as I can possibly feel at the moment. You know, that's just taking care of my body, where that's eating right, getting enough sleep, getting in the training room when I need to, and just being smart um, off the field. For sure. You know, so the key part is just being injury free. You know, if I feel like, if I can be injury free, throughout the rest of the year, then I, I feel pretty good about my chances. Offense early in the season was a big question, but you guys have all proved that you are quite a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, we're a young group. You know, we got two um, freshmen at um, tackle position, you know, a chance move to uh, guard. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then we got a new quarterback, and of course I'm new, but I have some experience. And we only have one returning starter, which is DeMarcus in a skill position. You know, so um, he has to get the um, skill guys ready. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sort of helping out with him with that part. You know, just going back and doing the little things right. You know, um, we still have more to improve on, and we just got to keep getting better and better. But overall, I think we're doing a pretty good job and just getting ready and being prepared for, um, on game day. So far this season, Coach has really utilized the running game with you, DeAndre, Randy, um, Adrian. Talk about how you have an experience that can help the younger guys. You know, um, them guys look up to me a lot. You know, they see if I'm able to run the ball um, effectively. You know, I go back and when I'm on the sideline, they ask me, how's it looking out there? And I kind of tell them, you know, um, so they feed off of me a little bit. You know, once one running back gets, gets going, it kind of um, motivates the other running back. You know, if I can do it, then they can do it. You know, there's one that those guys can't do. You know, so it's like all of us are just all in one. You know, if one of us can do it, we all can do it. So we all work pretty good like that. Awesome. Now looking at this week's game against Lamar, you played with them for a little bit. So how does that feel? Is it is there a different edge going into this game or is it just take care of business as usual? Just take care of business. I got to treat every game the same. 
you know, have the same approach, you know, just prepare well in practice so I can be ready for games on Saturdays. You know, it's going to be fun fun with those guys. Tonight, Sims is back on that same Shotwell Stadium turf where he led Abilene High to glory as the Wildcats take on Lamar. As football looks to remain undefeated in conference play, here's Hannah Little with other sports around ACU. Thanks, Shara. The volleyball team started its conference season last Thursday with the loss to the number one team in the Southland Conference, University of Central Arkansas. Junior Jenny Lurch totaled in 21 kills, and sophomore Lexi Mercier had 11 blocks. The game went into five sets as each game was neck and neck. The Wildcats then lost to the University of Incarnate Word on Sunday as the game also went into five sets. ACU will continue its conference season on the road as the team will face Northwestern State and Stephen F. Austin University this weekend. The soccer team defeated Nichols State and Southeastern Louisiana University in its back-to-back -back home games of the conference season last weekend. Bailey Mitchell, Lindsey Jones, and Maria Gomez scored at ACU's three goals against Nichols. Mitchell and Alyssa Gurner scored the team's two points in the game against Southeastern Louisiana. The cross-country team traveled to Oklahoma last weekend to compete in the Cowboy Jamboree. The women's top finisher was sophomore Diana Garcia as the Wildcats finished third overall in the meet. The men's team placed sixth place as newcomer Sterling Paul led the team placing 25th overall. The Wildcats will travel to Arkansas this weekend to compete in the Chili Pepper Festival. Head coach Keith Barnier says this meet will be one of the toughest meets that the team competes in. There's about 300 runners in each uh, for men and women in the college section. And it's all the SEC schools and, and a lot of the top uh, you know, junior colleges, a lot of the top Division II and three teams. So uh, it's nationally known as, as uh, you know, one of the best meets in the country. That's all from the JMC Network Sports Desk. See you next week. I'm Hannah Little. When we come back, we'll talk to Coach Collins about tonight's matchup against Lamar. Stay with us on the King Column Show, presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. As we welcome you back to the King Column Show, presented by Buffalo Wild Wings, take a look at today's schedule around the Southland Conference. Note Northwestern State, they had a bye week last week, coming off the win two weeks ago at Louisiana Tech. They'll take on Southeastern Louisiana, the defending conference champions. And last year when those two teams met, they're in Natchitoches, it went to the fourth quarter as a one-score game before Southeastern pulled away. And coach in Nacogdoches tonight. There should be some emotion as Clint Conk takes on his former team, UCA, visits his new team, Stephen F. That's your old boss. Yep, that'll be a good matchup. He's a good coach. They have a couple of good football teams yeah. getting after it. That'll be good. That's the schedule in the Southland Conference tonight. And, of course, the game we're focusing on, ACU versus Lamar. It's the first meeting since 1972 between these two Fellow founding members of the Southland Conference, the only two of the original five still in the Southland. Now, Lamar discontinued football in 1990, didn't have it for 20 years. They brought it back in 2010, but coach, they to me do not look like a team that's only been playing football for five years. They've already had some really nice wins uh, since they resumed playing football. Sure, they're a, they're a Southland Conference member, I mean, since, since 2010. So they've been recruiting at that level for mm. years now. And, uh, you know, the fact is, is they've got some really good players that, that we're going to have to do a good job against or, or we're not going to win the game. Uh, defensively, we better, we better slow those guys down because they can score. They, they, they may have issues, but they don't have issues scoring mm -hmm. points. And uh, uh, so our D-line's got to have a good ball game. It's all, it always starts up front. And, uh, you know, defensively, we've, we've, uh, or against their defense, we've got to do a good job of protecting the ball and, and uh, still mix it up like we always do. Yeah. All right, last season, their quarterback, Caleb Berry, was second in the conference in passing yards per game, and Reggie Begleton led the conference in receptions. Just how potent is their offense? Well, I mean, they're just good at what they do. They, they, they are very similar to what, to what we do. We, we like to run the ball, so do they. Mm -hmm. They know that running the ball helps them do everything else, and the, the better they run the ball, uh, you know, the better they're going to play action game and throwing the ball down the field. But, but Caleb's a good quarterback. He's very athletic. He can make throws. Uh, in the pocket, on the move, kind of like our guy Parker, uh, and, and he can throw. He can throw at different arm angles. When you look at him, you look at oh, this this guy can make some plays, make some throws, and uh, you know, he can also run the ball. So those two guys, in and of themselves, are going to put stress on our defense. Your guy Parker, Parker McKenzie, by the way, not bad. How about second in the nation in passing efficiency? 
and some of your quarterbacks have been high up in that category, and that's a combination of a bunch of things, including yards, yards per attempt, touchdowns thrown. Billy Malone was number one in 2008. Mitchell Gale was third in 2010. John David Baker last year was second. Parker second already this year through five games. Okay, I'm trying to get a handle on Lamar, and I'm trying to look at them, look at their defense. And it's hard as, as a guy just looking at it because they've, they've played A&M, the Texas A&M, which nobody has beaten. They're you know, undefeated, number six team in FBS. They've played two teams, one of which NAIA, one D3, who haven't won a game yet, and they blew them out. So as I try to get a handle on their defense, I'm having a tough time. Is it hard for a coaching staff to look at a team like Lamar that's played such a wide variety of opponents and try to figure out what they can and can't do? Well, not, not really. The bottom line is you study each individual. We study each D lineman, what he brings to the table, what his strengths and weaknesses are, how he matches up with our guys. And same way with their corners. I don't, their corners can run and they can cover. I know that. And their D line can compress and rush, and, and rush the passer. And, and it doesn't take long to figure out, you know what, Caleb can throw the ball. Mm -hmm. Those guys can run and catch it. And they can, and the running back can score from anywhere on the field. So, uh, it doesn't matter really who they've played against because we're not playing against those guys. We're playing against their scheme and their players. So uh, you try to now how you match up against them. Sometimes you know sometimes that will you can't really uh, you know that won't play out until Saturday. But but we know we 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 know what we're doing and we we know uh, we can identify a good player and they've got good players. Okay, no disrespect to Houston Baptist or Incarnate Word, but does tonight feel any different going up against an established conference team? Yeah, you, I mean, from here on out, we're going up against the big boys in the conference. And, uh, you know, the, our previous two teams that, that we've played, they're transitional teams just like us. So uh, this will be a really good measuring stick on, on uh, kind of where we are and what we'll have to do in the future to, to get to where we need to be in the Southland. But uh, we know we've got our work cut out for us. And, uh, you know, I'm talking it. We are practicing it. And our guys, we're having great practices. I love where we are right now. We're, we're going into this thing healthy. Uh, in, in a good place. Our guys feel really well, so we're excited about it. Speaking of feeling well, DeAndre Brown did not play the last two games. Herschel missed two weeks ago, came back, as we've discussed, with a vengeance last week. DeAndre back tonight. You expect him to play yes. and be full speed? Yes, and he, he'll, he'll be pretty hot. He'll be coming in there pretty hot, so we'll have two of, our, two of our quarter horses back there in the backfield, and that's what Parker McKenzie wants to see. Uh, the, the quarterback's best friend is a good running game, mm -hmm. and uh, so he's excited, and we are too. I'm ready to watch those guys run the ball. All right, it goes down tonight. Kickoff is at 6 p.m. at Shotwell Stadium. We'll have the broadcast beginning at 5.30 on the ACU Sports Network. That's 98.1 FM in Abilene and around the world on acusports.com. ACU versus the Lamar Cardinals for the first time since they were both Southland Conference members in 1972. For Sharon Nemorowski. And for Coach Ken Collins, I'm Grant Boone. Enjoy the game. We'll see you out there. We hope you can listen to the broadcast tonight from Shotwell. And we'll see you next week right here on the Ken Collins Show presented by Buffalo Wild.